Hi there. Let's take a few moments to think about the concept of trade creation. It's an important idea for those of you studying the economics of international trade and in particular the impact of trade agreements between countries. So what is trade creation? Well, trade creation happens when a country enters, for example, a free trade agreement with another nation or becomes involved in a customs union. Uh, a customs union means there's free trade between members of the union, but a common external tariff on goods and services around the customs union. Essentially, trade creation involves a change in the pattern of trade, a change away from uh, the higher cost source of supply from other countries towards a lower cost of supply. And that's as a direct result of entering into and signing a trade agreement. Two examples immediately spring to mind. One could be a, a gain uh, for producers who now get access to, to cheaper uh, raw materials or cheaper capital technologies because of the scrapping of an import tariff or, for example, the, the uh, dismantling of an import quota. Consumers, too, can also get access to cheaper goods and services, cheaper foods, uh, cheaper energy, for example, perhaps if there's a, a trade agreement between two nations. Now, one of the best ways of showing the impact of trade creation is, in fact, just to use an analysis diagram. And essentially what you're looking at is the, the reverse tariff diagram. So you're looking at the effect of cutting an import tariff. Before we look at the analysis diagram, a quick contextual example. China is a country that over the recent uh, past, last 10 years or so, has entered into numerous free trade agreements with countries. Uh, Chile back in 2006, Singapore 2009, and two of the most recent ones, and I think significant trade agreements, are with China and South Korea in 2015, and China and Australia. Indeed, we're starting to see some of the effects of this Shafta trade agreement. Uh, the Australian government recently published data showing that their sales, their exports of seafood into China were growing strongly, in part because as a result of Chafta, the average tariff on Australian seafood going into China is now just 3.2%, and that's, uh, that's more than half uh, the tariff uh, on exports going into China from some competitor countries. So some evidence here of trade creation happening as a result of a tariff coming down. So here's the analysis diagram we can use to show this. We'll take the market for cars. And in the market for cars, initially, there was a price, P1 uh, plus T. So this, this market is affected by an import tariff, uh, which is called the domestic price. The prevailing price would be P1 plus the import tariff. At that price, domestic supply, assuming that domestic car producers are price takers, is Q1. And domestic demand from consumers, people, households buying cars and businesses buying fleets of cars is Q2. Uh, Q1, Q2 represents excess domestic demand and that will be taken up by imports. So let's assume now that countries enter into a trade agreement, which over time, not necessarily instantaneously, which over time brings down the average tariff. They may fall to zero but uh, that, that may happen uh, over a number of years. So now that the tariff falls to zero and assume the price now falls to, to P2. So that's now the price for cars in the market without any import tariff. Here's the trade creation effects. Firstly, domestic suppliers, well, they may not be necessarily be able to compete as well at that lower price. Uh, depends on their costs, obviously. But we're going to assume that P2, the domestic supply, will contract to Q3 uh, because domestic car producers are perhaps not able to be price competitive at the new lower price. So there's an issue there to do with the fall in domestic output and the extent to which factors of production are mobile and can find alternative uses. However, there's a clear gain for consumers. Consumers can now buy cars from other countries at a much lower price because there's no tariff. So domestic demand expands to Q4 from Q2. And now Q4 is much greater than Q3. So the quantity of imports at the lower price P2 is significantly increased. Now, this trade creation will have welfare effects. And we'll put together a special revision video taking you through the fine detail of the welfare consequences of trade creation. 
but essentially trade creation has brought down the price, generated increased demand because you can now get your cars more cheaply from overseas and created a change in the pattern, pattern of output between domestic and imported products. That is the essence of trade creation. Under certain assumptions, you can make the case for saying that welfare, in fact, will have increased. Producer welfare, domestic producer welfare has fallen, but there's been a substantial gain in domestic consumer welfare because they now have access to cheaper, cheaper imports. So that is the essence of trade creation.